One month on, death and destruction is still rampant in Khartoum, where warring factions continue to battle for power. In the capital, residents say intense fighting has continued to rage on, despite the military and RSF agreeing to protect civilians following talks in Jeddah. Here in Port Sudan, over 300 people boarded an evacuation flight to Qatar on Saturday, many fleeing from the rising death toll. <laughs> فيهم البيوت متكسرت فيهم البيوت متنهبت سيارات متنهبت غزائف وقعت عليهم في البيت فيهم إصابات فيهم موت البلد يعني الدعم السريع نقول دمر الخرطوم خالص Duhanin joined the Qatari Amiri Air Force as it delivered 17 tons of medical aid and equipment to the war-torn Sudan. Donated by the ICRC in cooperation with Qatar Red Crescent, the aid will be distributed to thousands across the country. Qatar's ambassador to Sudan, Mohammed bin Ibrahim Sada, who was aiding with the evacuations, told Doha News that the aid will be distributed by personal teams on the ground to ensure it reaches those most in need. The office started immediate uh, uh, supply to the location of various food parcels to the families. Most of them they flee the, the, the crisis and now they are, they are just homeless without any support from anywhere. So the ferry support came from uh, Qatar at present, these food parcels. Then we moved to the uh, Port Sudan and also we supported those who are in the desert. This is the fourth evacuation by Qatar, which has already airlifted hundreds of civilians since the violence first erupted last month. As Sudan continues to navigate through a complex political and humanitarian situation, the unrest has caused a daunting challenge for the country. With more than 600 dead, talks in Jeddah appear to be bleak for Sudanese civilians, many of whom see more hope in seeking refuge elsewhere than staying in what has become a fractured home. Minatala Ibrahim, Doha News, Port Sudan.